These are the top five entry-level cybersecurity careers for 2025 and their salaries. And if you're looking for full career roadmaps for any of these jobs, I guarantee I have a video on that on my channel. So I'll link some additional videos, but in no particular order coming at number one on this list is an SOC analyst. This is the OG entry-level cybersecurity blue team role for anyone who is interested in defensive security. And now I've made a lot of videos on SOC analysts, but your main job is to work within a security operations center or an SOC and basically detect, analyze, and respond to cyber threats and security incidents. So what does this mean on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, in my last role, I was also working somewhat in an SOC capacity, but I was just part of a really small team. So basically we all did everything. And one of the things that we had to do was manage all of the SIEM or SIM alerts that would pop up throughout the day. Now, depending on your company's infrastructure, the typical setup is to have a SIEM where all the logs, information, events are managed in one place. And then using that log information, you can create rules or alerts for anytime XYZ happens or anytime something suspicious happens, then you can send an alert to the team either through an email or a ping or creating a ticket, et cetera. And that is where an SOC analyst steps in and, and answers that alert and has to go and dig into the logs to see whether or not this is a true positive, an actual threat, or a false positive, something that, that maybe looks suspicious but is not actually a threat to the company. But don't forget, depending on the size of your business, what industry you're in, the way that your alerts are set up in your SIEM, you could be getting up to hundreds of alerts a day. But it's also one of the entry-level jobs in cybersecurity where I personally think you can learn the most. Whether you want to stay in blue team and climb up the SOC ladder or even pivot into red team or even purple team. So there's a lot of opportunities for growth and the things that you're actually learning because the skills that you learn would be relevant in any kind of role in cybersecurity that you might want to go into in the future. And the average salary of an SOC analyst in the US is between $65,000 to $85,000 per year. So it's definitely a pretty good salary, especially considering that most SOC analysts are closer to entry level and early career. And if there is an alert that is a true positive, which means it is actually some suspicious activity or potentially a security incident, then you as an SOC level one will escalate it to a higher level team who actually spin out the incident and dig deeper with of course a case report that you've written up with the information that you found, the logs that you'll be using as evidence, all pass up the chain. Job number two on this list is a network security admin. So this is one of the roles that have the biggest overlap between cybersecurity and IT. It is another reason why I personally also recommend if you're interested in breaking into cyber, then another route into cyber is to first start in IT and then pivot your way into cyber because in general, there are more entry-level IT jobs compared to entry-level cybersecurity jobs. So you'll likely be fighting against less candidates who are applying to the same jobs and it'll be easier for you to get your foot in the door because the experience level needed for IT and help desk roles are a lot lower than entry-level cybersecurity roles. So just something to note there. But as a network security admin, you'll be working on things like securing firewalls, setting up or managing corporate VPNs, and of course, creating, reviewing, implementing security policies to protect a corporate network. And if you've seen any of my previous posts talking about the World Economic Forum's Future of Jobs Report 2025, then you'll know that number two on the list of the fastest growing skills by 2030 is networking and cybersecurity. Of course, right after the number one skill on the list, which is AI. But considering that networks and cybersecurity came in at number two of the fastest growing skills in the world internationally is already a huge indication of how much demand there's going to be in the cybersecurity sector. And networking is going to be one of the big niches that you should consider focusing on. A great way into networking or network security is of course through an IT analyst job. I'll also link the beginner IT course I recommend for anyone trying to break into IT and cybersecurity linked in my description below. It is a great course to go through if you're trying to get hired. And the average salary for a network security administrator is about $70,000 to $88,000 per year in the US. Okay, before we continue, did you know that I can find your full name, contact information, and even your address online? And what's even worse, there are companies out there that will literally sell your data to anyone who wants it, which ends up with you getting spammed with ads and anyone with access to your personal information. The internet knows too much about you, but here's what you can do about it. Basically, one way is to spend hours manually opting out of each data broker site that collects and sells your data. But this could literally take you weeks just to submit an opt-out request on each site. So the second way, which is what I do and personally recommend, is to let Delete Me do the heavy lifting for you. Delete Me is a privacy tool that removes your personal information from data broker sites, sends you reports on what they've removed, and keeps your data off of shady lists. They do this by continuously scanning for your information and submitting opt-out requests on your behalf. Think of this as having a virtual assistant who keeps your personal information off of the internet. 
And right now you can get a free delete me scan to find out which data brokers are selling your information and get 20% off your delete me subscription using the link in my description or at joindeleteme.com slash with Sandra. Stay safe out there and thank you to delete me for sponsoring this portion of the video and let's get back to the rest of the topics. All right, job number three on this list is a GRC analyst. Okay, so as someone who has personally gone through internal audits, external audits, ISO audits, SOC 2 audits, this is another one of those bold predictions I've made that Personally, I think GRC is going to be a really, really popular area in cybersecurity. Hence, one of my previous videos called The Future of Cybersecurity is GRC. If you think about it this way, with all the new technologies, all the advancements with AI, who is going to be creating the policies, the compliance requirements to make sure that AI isn't doing what it's not supposed to be doing or that companies running these AI models and creating them are doing so ethically and in a way that is actually keeping data private. This all comes back to GRC and that is why I think with the long-term adoption of AI across the board internationally with more and more companies using free tools, using a bunch of AI wrappers, I mean, there's like millions of them nowadays. GRC analysts are going to have a lot of work cut out for them because this also comes down to the question of what a GRC analyst actually does. Their job is to ensure that a company or an organization, any cybersecurity regulations, compliance requirements, best practices, standards for the sector that they're operating in. Now, why do they want to do this? Firstly, to avoid fines by any government or any regulatory bodies who are making sure that companies have to comply against certain requirements. And number two, it is because their customers or users want to work with companies and organizations that are actually adhering to the security standards and compliance requirements that are out there. For example, Microsoft isn't going to be working with some random company if they don't have certain security standards in place or if they don't have certain certifications that they're looking for in a business partner or a vendor. And not to mention that GRC is the only non-technical cybersecurity job that is on this list. So if you're someone who is interested in cybersecurity, but not necessarily the technical nitty gritty side of things, then Honestly, GRC is a really great place to start because the type of person to enjoy pen testing is not the same person who would enjoy GRC. In fact, if you put a pen tester in the middle of a compliance audit, they would very much not enjoy their time there. So yes, these are very two different types of people, but both types of people would be interested in cybersecurity, but in different aspects. I've made lots of different videos on GRC analysts and how to break into GRC, and I'll link a few of those down in my description if you're interested in checking those out. But the technical versus non-technical is definitely the biggest differentiator, especially if you're early on in your career in cybersecurity and still deciding which path is right for you. Then I would personally take a few free trainings in GRC and red team and blue team, and then decide from there which one was most interesting to you, which one did you get bored the least, and which one would you actually be interested in you know continuing it's basically a little test figuring out what you actually enjoy and not just the job that sounds cool because a lot of people come into cybersecurity and think it's just hacking but that is very much not the truth there's so many different cybersecurity career paths hacking or red teaming is just one of them and the average salary for a grc analyst is sixty five thousand to eighty five thousand dollars per year in the u.s all right job number four this is a junior pen tester so your job as a pen tester is to conduct simulated cyber attacks to identify any potential vulnerabilities in computer systems and networks and the most basic definition is the fact that you're basically trying to find the bugs the vulnerabilities in a system before an actual attacker will try to exploit them. This is the typical cybersecurity job that you've probably seen in all the kids shows growing up. I probably can't count how many movies I've seen where there's always some teenager who's in the back of a van who's just typing a bunch of stuff into a laptop and there's a bunch of terminals popping up on the screen and then suddenly they're in. Yeah, that's that's basically what I guess media portrays pen testing and ethical hacking to be like, but typically is not as straightforward as that. A lot of it also comes down to planning, documentation, research. So it's not just hacking that you're doing. There's a lot of different skills that also go into it. For example, I always say this on my channel, but the main deliverable after a pen test is not the full pen test, but it's actually the pen test report. And nowadays I'm sure it's a lot easier because there are AI tools that can basically spin up a pen test report for you, or at least a template of one so that you can at least have something to start with. But Back then, I say back then, but it's really just a few years ago. When I was personally on a junior pen testing team, we would write up these reports ourselves. And I mean, some of these reports can go up to 30, 40 pages long. And the more senior members of the team would have reports that are more than 100 pages long. So the report is really the bread and butter of what you're doing. Even after you find potential vulnerabilities or bugs that you can exploit in a system or on a website or application, you have to write those down in a repeatable way, as well as of course provide potential mitigations for the development team or, or whatever stakeholders that you're doing the pen test for to help them understand the vulnerability, why it's important, how attackers could take advantage of it, and basically how to mitigate it or get rid of the vulnerability. So there's 
a lot that goes into it, not just the hacking part, but also the reporting, the speaking to stakeholders, the research part of things, researching exploits, researching vulnerabilities, researching new tools that you could be using to conduct better pen tests, and is also one of the most technical roles in cybersecurity. But there's a lot of training out there for beginners on try hack me, on hack the box, on just using open source tools like Burp Suite, Metasploit, Z Attack Proxy. There's a lot of open source stuff out there that you can use to get hands-on practice. And the average salary for a junior pen tester is $70,000 to $90,000 per year in the US. All right, we're almost at the end of this. Hopefully at least one of these roles have been interesting to you, but this last one, number five, I think really takes the cake because it is personally what I personally spent the most time in my career working in, and that is the good old general cybersecurity or information security analyst. Now you may be wondering, what is the difference between a cybersecurity analyst and an SOC analyst? Sometimes, depending on the company, there is no difference. They're called the same thing by the same title. Other times, based on my personal work experience, the SOC analyst specifically focuses on a blue team, on defensive security, whereas cybersecurity analysts sometimes can touch basically everything. And that was the same in my case, especially because I was working in a pretty small team, less than 10 people in my last company. And we basically, again, touched everything. So I would say cybersecurity analysts are one of the most jack of all trades type role in cybersecurity. You could be managing security alerts from an SIM. You could also be helping draft up policies for different compliance regulations. You could be analyzing threats or looking at new CVEs that were added or using threat intelligence tools, implementing any security measures that are required or requested by your customers, managing the cybersecurity team's risk register, basically anything that you can think of that is general cybersecurity, also managing anything security related on the vendor management side or procurement side. You may also be working directly with the privacy or the legal team. Basically anything general cybersecurity can fall under a cybersecurity analyst workload. But I personally think that also makes it a lot of fun because you can learn a lot in just one job as a cybersecurity analyst. Of course, every job is going to be different, but personally, I actually recommend working for a smaller company because you can probably touch a lot more projects. In my career, I've worked at Fortune 50 companies, but I've also worked at smaller startup companies. So, you know, it really depends on the experience that you want, but of course, get experience in both if you're interested in testing both out. But personally, I will say that you can definitely learn the most from a smaller company where you can have more responsibility in terms of the potential projects that you'll be working on because in a large company where you're just one in, you know, maybe a thousand cybersecurity employees, you're most likely not going to be leading projects so early on in your career, which is also a good thing because then you can learn from mentors, you can learn from the senior members of your team. But after a while, I think Learning does really come from leading projects and actually getting hands-on experience, doing more technical work, and having that level of responsibility you're more likely to get in a smaller cybersecurity team. And the average salary for a cybersecurity analyst in the US is $75,000 to $95,000 per year. All right, that is it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. Hopefully this video was helpful and I gave you an overview of the five most common cybersecurity entry-level career paths that you can go into. You can check out Delete Me and get a free scan of which data broker sites are selling your data. And you can also get 20% off of your Delete Me subscription through the link in my description. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and I'll be happy to answer them. Don't forget to stay connected on LinkedIn, on Discord, Instagram, also all linked in my description. I usually update those daily. So if you want daily resources and cybersecurity updates, feel free to follow along there. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe as it really does help out the channel. I post videos weekly and hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!